every stroke in swimming, there are three components to the technique, the arms, the legs, and the breath. We've already been over the breath, we've been over the kick, now we're gonna talk about the arms. Now, the pull itself is three parts as well. You've got the pull, the catch, this is the pull and the catch, then you've got the push, and then you have the recovery. Now the recovery part is the part we usually talk the least about because it should just be recovery. If that means for you it's a straight arm recovery or it's a high elbow recovery, either one works. It doesn't matter that much. They used to think it mattered a lot. Now they don't really care so much how anybody recovers over the water so long as to them it feels effortless. So we're going to focus on two drills that talk about the, what's happening underneath the water. The first drill is the okay drill. So you're going to make the okay sign without spreading your fingers apart. Just let them relax right here. And you're going to make the, the circle with your pointer finger and your thumb. When your hands are out in front, every time you catch water, you want to be catching it with this half of your palm. Your body's going to be slightly rotated onto its side. So you don't want to put an equal amount of pressure on your whole hand, but rather try to feel like you're pulling the water in towards your body a little bit. So you're going to pull in, and then as you push out the back with this drill, you're gonna slip a lot of water. It's not gonna feel very good. That's okay, just focus on the catches out front. The catches out front. The pistol drill, we will talk about then what happens when you push through the center of your body back through the remainder of the stroke. But for now, we're just talking about the catch and how you catch water out in front. You wanna catch it with a high elbow or an early vertical forearm. What that means is you don't want to drop your elbow to pull because it's going to impinge your shoulder back here. Rather, you want to stay on top of the arm by rolling your shoulder into your chin or your jaw and waiting until that elbow is now angled up towards the sky a little bit more. So it's going to look like this. Oftentimes I'll jam it in first and then rotate my hand. That's That ought to be what your freestyle pull looks like right here. So as you do this drill, Make sure that you're getting high elbows underwater. The fingertips will go pointing down towards the bottom of the pool because you're pulling water with your forearm and your hand. That is the pull out in front right here. All right, so you're pulling water out in front and then letting the hands kind of just slip backwards. It doesn't matter right now in this drill what's happening behind. Don't worry about that. Just focus on the pulls out in front. If you need to do extended breaths on your side, like we're going to make Quinton do, that's okay too. But swimming with this little inhibitor here will make you feel like your hands have mittens on them when we open them back up. So you're going to feel like you have big hands when we swim back. I'm going to do the drill back towards Quinton one more time and for you guys one more time just so he can see the drill. Watch this. The OK drill. Let's see how it goes. Wow. Nice. Good. Head back, pushing up. <clears throat> Chin up. Finish it off. Good. Now, you're going to notice that that was harder for him than the last thing we did, which was just swimming regularly. This is a drill. So he wanted it to feel easy. We found out pretty quickly it wasn't. So now we're going to swim back and he's going to be like, that's so much easier. That's the point of the drill. That's the point of the drill. Breathe a lot. <laughs> Almost hit the wall. It's okay. You're good. You're good. You're good.
Good. Nice. Good to finish. Way, way to finish that one strong. All right. The next drill we're gonna go over is the pistol drill. Drill. So the pistol drill, your fingers will be like this. So your thumbs will be tucked into your fingers. And what's happening now is you're gonna slip water out in front because these fingers are down. You're gonna slip the water out in front. But then as you push water back, I want you to flex your wrist. And I want you to literally flex your wrist because you're always traveling in the direction of the back of your palm. So if you were to pull back through the back of your stroke like this, Eventually you'll be pulling water up and that doesn't help you do anything but go down towards the bottom. We don't need that. So as you pull back, when, you, when your hand passes the center of your heart, the center of your body or your heart, now you're gonna flex the wrist as you push it back to keep water constantly being pressed straight backwards, shooting you forwards. Okay, so the pistol drill, when you pull the arm back, and you start to flex your wrist, you're gonna feel all the pressure now on the inside of your palm. It's gonna feel kind of strange. You're gonna slip water out in front, like I said, but then as you push back, I want you to push back as far as you can with your, with your wrist flexed. That's gonna give you more time with the front arm to push it forwards. It's like an ice skater. Now you'll be pushing farther back, pushing farther forwards, and you'll be stretching your body line out like it should be. When we start to swim too short and choppy, we get ourselves into trouble. When we stretch out and lengthen each stroke as far as we can, you'll start to feel a lot more balance. Okay, so I'm gonna have you start flexing your wrist with the pistol drill. the head more in line with the spine if you can. <sighs> yeah, you're good. Kind of more in line with your spine. If you can see your shoulder, it might also help. It's good. Get back on your belly soon. You're going crooked. We're gonna restart. Change his own course here. Yeah, he changed his own course. No problem. We're almost there. We're almost there. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, Quentin is now swimming all on his own. Yes, it is still with fins, and a lot of you out there um, commented on that within the Mark video. We're still using fins because he's still learning how to swim. You think by day four he was ready for the Olympic team? You're crazy. He is now swimming full lengths in the pool all by himself. We're moving on to the first drill of the day. It's the OK drill. You're going to make the OK sign with your hand and you're going to pull regular freestyle. And what you'll feel is a little bit infuriating, but what you'll feel is your hands will be able to pull just normally out front because when you catch in freestyle, you want to catch in the pressure to be on the outside three fingers. So the pressure on the catch will come as you kind of pull towards your body a little bit pressure being on these outside three fingers. And then as it comes back, we'll talk about that next because the pressure changes. But for now, we're just talking about the, the catch out in front. We're gonna do something called a high elbow catch from now on. So a high elbow catch is something that we kind of started doing, uh, I don't know, a few decades ago, but Katie Ledecky is the world's greatest high elbow catch swimmer ever. She has such flexible shoulders and elbows that when she pulls, her elbow almost remains completely at the surface. It's absolutely bonkers. It's also called an early vertical forearm because your forearm goes vertical underneath the surface of the water. This is your paddle, this is your oar. It's kind of like creating an anchor out front and then pushing through the back. 
Once again, we'll talk about the push through the back in a second. Right now, we're still talking about the pull, the catch out in front. This is the first part of three parts to the freestyle catch, the pull, the push, and the recovery. The pull is out front. It needs to be a high elbow catch. You're always traveling in the direction of the back of your hand. So when your hand enters the water, you're not pulling, but as soon as you start pulling, you want that hand to start anchoring a little bit, and then you want the elbow to follow suit, and then you'll push through the back. Okay, so it's kind of like going over one of those giant exercise balls that you would see in gyms. It's kind of like going over one of those. Okay, so we're gonna do the okay drill. I want you to not worry about how, how frustrating it feels when you slip water. Just focus on how good it feels when you catch water with these three fingers out in front, okay? So this gives you catch awareness. It gives you a, what we call a feel for the water. By limiting the surface area of your hand that's coming in contact with the water, when we open things back up, you're gonna feel like you have mittens on, like your hands are twice as big as they were before. I mean, you're wearing paddles. So you're gonna feel really good. And what it's doing is it's giving you a feel of the water that you didn't realize you didn't have. It's a drill that I didn't do until I think I was in high school. And as soon as I did it, I then did this drill before every single one of my races in my small little personal warm up before I would go behind the blocks and swim my race. I would always do the okay drill and the pistol drill because they're just such good drills for giving a swimmer a feel for the water and what it's like when their hand is going backwards. Is it waving? Is it pulling straight back? Some of you guys have that question. You ask me, is it, are you supposed to pull like a light bulb or a question mark? Some of you have asked, do you just pull straight back? Short answer is pull straight back. The long answer is it doesn't matter all that much. It's not like you're a way less efficient swimmer if you're doing the light bulb. But we have found that diving your hands straight forward, pulling it straight down, pulling it straight back is the most efficient way to stay in your body. So I'm still swimming kind of like a superhero, catch up, something like that. If you want to do this catch up, you can. Might make it easier, might make it harder. Should make it easier. But you're swimming, just normal freestyle, but your hands are doing something else. Most likely there will not be a lot of corrections that I can make to hit this drill for him. For these drills, you're, he's getting into the stage of swimming that's really fun. You don't have to do things perfectly. There's not like a lot of mistakes you can make. At these, during these drills, I'll actually ask the question, how did that feel? I'll get him to start talking to me more today and telling me how things feel so that he can start processing on his own the way the, the stroke and the pull feels. Because having a feel for the water is, is some, something that some people are born with. Some people are just born with this natural feel of the water and it's absolutely incredible. My guess is Katie Ledecky probably has some sort of natural feel for the water, but that doesn't mean she didn't work it harder than anybody else I've ever known. She works very hard. She worked very hard to get that perfect stroke and she never stopped. A lot of times if you need a reset while doing a drill, that's okay, stop and reset. Over time, you'll notice though that you, you can recover without having to reset. Mark's starting to pick on, up on that. He just recovered from an, a wonky breath, he recovered instead of resetting. That's totally fine. If you need to reset, reset. 
if you think you can recover, go for it. Go ahead and try to recover. It builds more con connections, builds a little bit of coordination. It's, it's good. We're opening up his hands now, full freestyle stroke. He's gonna feel really, really good. He's gonna like this a lot. How did that feel? Good. Yeah. It's gonna feel like you have an extra large hands. It's gonna, you're also gonna notice that you just feel water that you've never, you never really noticed how water felt that way before. It feels really soft, really smooth. Also kind of feels heavy. When you open up your whole hand, you've only been pulling with half the weight you normally do. And when you open up your whole hand, you're pulling with all that weight. It, it makes the water feel heavier. You'll start to appreciate how when you glide through the water, it has nothing to do with what's happening up here. It's not jamming your hand out front. It's all about pulling backwards. That pulling of the heavy water moves your vessel, your body, over the surface of the water. The pull and the kick, the only way you move forwards in the water is if you're redirecting water backwards. You do that with your kick. When I kick, you'll see the, the ripples go away from my feet backwards so that moves me forwards the other way I move forwards in the water is when I pull that moves my body forwards so the best swimmers in the world are always focusing on like a skate take technique they are like skating as if they were on ice one foot is pushing while the other foot is gliding they push with the back foot glide with the front foot, push with the back foot, glide with the front foot. Same thing in swimming. You're gonna pull with one arm and glide with the other. Watch me. Hey, nice extra long breath you got in there. Well done, you handled it well. You kept both arms underwater until you had caught your breath. That's really good. You need an extra breath. You can either do a full pineapple or folks out there, you can just like what he just did, which is stay in hand lead position for a little bit longer, get a couple more breaths and then keep going. That's excellent. Now we're gonna talk about the pistol drill. The pistol drill is the second drill we're working on today. It is usually married to the okay drill. So oftentimes if I'm giving someone the okay drill, I'll usually also be giving them the pistol drill in the same lesson. Pistol drill, you have these three fingers. So yeah, I know your middle finger is involved in both drills, but the pressure of the water when you push backwards shifts to the inside of your palms. So as you catch out front, your arm will be about directly underneath your body, halfway through its pull, when all of a sudden, you're not pulling anymore, you're pushing. And so you kind of got to know the difference on how that's going to feel on your palm. That's what the pistol drill is for. When you push back, you're going to push back with your fingers like this. You're going to do the whole pull with your fingers like that. But I want you to flex your wrist when you get halfway through the catch, halfway through the pull, you're going to then let your wrist flex as you push out back. The reason that you want your wrist flexed is because you're always traveling in the direction of the back of your hand. So if you were to pull through and then pull up, technically you're pushing your body down. There's no need for that. We want to go forwards. We always want to be traveling forwards. Fastest route between two points is a straight line, not a curvy line up and down or back and forth. 
So as you pull, you're flexing your wrist through the back of the stroke. That's gonna allow you to really push water straight backwards the entire pull. Now, this is kind of a new development, this flexed wrist technique. It hasn't been tied, it's not circulating around the world yet. In fact, I even saw a lot of Olympians still pulling the old way. But this flexed wrist technique is the best way, the most efficient way to finish off a freestyle pull. So for the pistol drill, I'll show you what it looks like. Don't worry about the catch out front. You're gonna feel like you're slipping a lot of water. That's okay. Just push all the way through the stroke. Push all the way back through the stroke, not up. I don't wanna see water flying up into the air. I wanna see it being pushed back, back. Okay. All right, I'll show you what it looks like. So you'll see that I'm pushing really hard through the back of the stroke and flexing my wrist. Here we go. Yes. So the pistol drill, now that he's done it, I don't like to say anything regarding a, a drill or create any expectations in someone's mind, any, especially any negative expectations in someone's mind before they do the drill. But now that he's done it once and he just said that felt weird, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Pistol drill is not as fun to do as the OK drill. The OK drill is a lot easier. It feels faster. It feels like you have more control. The pistol drill will start to make you feel a little imbalanced because it focuses on the back half of the pull. And the back half of the pull, once your arms are back here, you're not front quadrant swimming anymore. So trying to make progress back here is kind of infuriating. If I had you just pulling out front or just pushing out back, you would prefer to pull out front a lot more than just pushing out back. So that's why this drill doesn't feel so good, but it's still an important drill that helps people feel the water out back. It also helps people feel the difference now between the pull and the push. The pull feels a little bit different on your palm than the push does. And that's that feel of the water that we're creating. So how did that feel? Talk to me more about it. Felt weird. <laughs> like you're slipping a lot of water. Yeah, and then I was just trying to get the feel while you're underwater to make sure I wasn't going up too high because it's hard to feel so i try to just go straight back but it a couple is. times i know that i missed my breath so that i just held it and went a couple more strokes and yeah know, it's all close to the end i just kind of looked through learning a new drill because drills are purposely going to make things awkward yeah that'll happen breaths will fall apart things right. will fall apart and then all of a sudden they come back together right Now that he's gonna open up both of his hands, what he's gonna find is he can really pull through the back so hard that it might like overshoot sometimes. He might like fling his hand up into the air and it'll come back down and that's gonna be okay. That's just the power of the drill. It's creating a new feel for the water as you push through the back of your stroke. Once it's a, that's what I'm saying. Once it's a matter of taking the drills away and just saying.
that left arm. I thought I thought that was his right with how like technical he was with it. You know, it looked really good. Sure. But that reco the recovery. Okay guys, the third drill we're doing today with Mark is the zipper drill. We've done the okay drill to work on the catch, the pull, the front part of the pull. We've done the pistol drill to work on the push part of the stroke of the pull. Now we're gonna talk about the recovery part. I wanna start by saying, don't ever give any effort to the recovery portion of the stroke. The recovery portion should be just that, recovery. You should be recovering from the pole, the exhausted, the exhausting part that is the pole. Your arm comes up, it's recovery. Therefore, what I'm trying to get at is, if you're a straight arm recovery person, that's fine. If you're a high elbow recovery person, that's fine. If you're somewhere in the middle like me, that's fine too. We used to think it really mattered what your arms looked like above the water. We thought it made a big difference. Then we realized it doesn't. It's the pole that's underneath the water that makes all the difference. It's like an iceberg. The majority of the work is done underneath the surface of the water. So what happens up here is not that important. So what I'll usually do is one drill to, to talk about recovery strokes, just to get people aware of what's happening up there. And then after that, I tell them, now never think about it again. But the zipper drill, it, you're pretending to zipper the side of your body with your thumb. And then put your hand out in front, zipper the other side, hand out in front, Zipper, zipper. So it's gonna keep your elbows kind of close to your body during the recovery portion of the stroke. That's okay. That's gonna help you, uh, it's gonna help lose a little bit of balance so that you'll, he'll be forced to, to tighten up his kick and to become more balanced, just like the hand lead series drills. But this zipper drill, the reason we're gonna do this instead of doing like a straight arm recovery is because a straight arm recovery is beneficial, especially if you're sprinting, but it actually can create a bigger pull underwater, which gets exhausting sooner. So I usually like to teach people the zipper drill so that when they put their hands in the water, they're already used to this elbow bending about that much, which when you're pulling, doing the front catch, it'll bend a lot. For me, I, I do this and a mix of this and catch up freestyle anytime I'm swimming because it helps you with that recovery. Now at this drill, there's not like, like the other two, there's not a lot of corrections I could make to it. It's kind of hard to mess this drill up. I'm just gonna ask him how he feels. And if he tells me something that seems like a red flag, I'll see how I can help him fix it. Other than that, if he just tells me like, oh, it feels a little bit restricting. I feel kind of awkward in the water. Like I can't swim taller. That's all normal. Ideally, what that drill will do for you is create like a, 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 a more of a rotation in your body line so that when we swim as humans, we're actually more hydrodynamic when we swim on our sides. You cut through it. You cut through it. And half your body is now out of the water, right? So what this drill will hopefully help you do, I'll demonstrate the drill again and then go into regular freestyle. So it's really just creating awareness of the arm that's in the air. It's just nice and easy. My hand is dangling. My wrist is, is kind of loose. It's just an elbow that I bring up to the air and then let the hand kind of fall forward all on its own. Because he's breathing. 
breathing with that on that side. Might have to breathe to the other side or do every four. Yeah, on the first one because he's doing his breathing. So maybe maybe do four every four breaths or every four strokes he breathes. Say what? You get a snorkel. So he's he's using fins. Oh, that breath came a little quicker that time. Whoa. Oh yeah, there we go. Bruh. <laughs> Dude, he could do a 50 easy. Nice bone. Bro. Wow! So you're no longer really pausing very long for your breaths. You're way more efficient. You're getting the breath clear and easy before the arm comes around. So you're starting to look smooth. You're starting to look smooth like me. At this point, after all of these drills, Mark is starting to be able to sneak his breath in through the stroke. So instead of the stroke having to be paused for the breath, even if it was just one breath, there was usually, there was usually a distinct pause happening. Well, on that 25, I saw Mark starting to just kind of swim smooth. The arms never really stop, but the breath was snuck in to the stroke. I like that a lot. It's getting a lot smoother. He's getting more balance in the water. He's getting more confident, and he's got the stamina and the body line up higher in the water. All of that's working together in his favor to give him that smooth freestyle that we just saw. So now we're gonna put paddles on Mark. Now, most paddles will tell you which one is the left and which one is the right. Unfortunately, this particular pair of paddles doesn't say, but I have been in the sport long enough to know how they expect me to wear these. Paddles are like fins for your hands. They increase the surface area of your pole. So with that, you're gonna feel like you have a monstrous pole. He's got fins on too, so he's about to feel really good. Now, a little disclaimer here for you. If you find yourself feeling pain when you use paddles, stop using the paddles. Especially if that pain is in your shoulder or your elbow. That means you're putting some unnecessary stress in the wrong places. That could be because your technique isn't efficient enough yet. Or it could be that your body type is different and it's not gonna do well. Or it could be an old injury that's just gonna get irritated by the paddles. So just don't wear them until you've come to see me. We've really analyzed your technique to make sure paddles are safe for you. Now I've been watching Mark stroke from above and below the water and I know that these won't hurt him. Now I'm still gonna have him tell me if they do, but I can almost guarantee they won't hurt him. He's got a lot of power. So the paddles are gonna create surface area that's gonna give you such a strong pull that he's gonna to start to realize you don't need your kick. And that's important because tomorrow is all about helping him not need his kick anymore. You know, first thing I do every time I put on paddles, no matter what, on that recovery, it gets caught in the water. Oh. And I was really waiting for that to happen. He's not doing it. Well, still, because I'm used to using the, fi the fingertip drag technique with the recovery in it. Okay, so now he's gotten a chance to use the paddles. He likes them, of course. We've also been doing a lot of pole drills today. So then to finish with giving him a little bit extra power is going to feel great every time. If you're out there and you have a coach who trains you, great, follow his directions. But if you are someone who trains themselves, then I recommend kind of trying to follow a pattern similar to the one we've been doing this week. And that is start off with something a little bit more difficult, a little bit kind of hard to master. Maybe it requires some coordination. Move into something that's a little bit more enjoyable to do and finish with the most enjoyable thing that you can do. That way, every time you leave the pool, you're excited to come back. Always finishing. I like to finish with like fins, paddles, um, fast stuff, short, fast burst stuff, or having swimmers go down the slide if I had, there's a slide at the pool, whatever it may be. But always finishing with something more fun, more enjoyable for you to do is very key. Keep you sane.
right, his stroke is looking very, very powerful now. I'm gonna have him do his first 50. For those of you who don't know, in normal regulation size swimming pools, from one end to the other is 25 yards or meters, depending on where you are in the world. And then two lengths of the pool would be 50. Three is 75, four is 100. Think of it as like having quarters in a dollar. If you had 25 cents, you'd have one quarter. Therefore, 25 yards is one length of the pool. 50 cents would be two quarters. 50 yards would be two lengths of the pool. So on and so forth. So we're going to have him do his first 50. It's going to make him fatigued, especially when I tell him at the other end, he's only allowed to take up to three breaths maximum before I want him to push off for a second lap. Now it's going to be a little bit hard, but what we're going to see is his technique falls apart a little bit on the second lap, feels a little bit tired. All of a sudden tomorrow or the next time he just does a simple 25, it's going to feel so easy. Striding with this kick now too, like he can, you can see him incorporate it when he's recovering. I don't fuck with left paddles. What happened? It like the, it, it got caught on the water and his finger came out. Fix the paddle, you're good. Let's go, Mark. Come on, Mark. There you go. There you go. Keep pushing. Yeah, he's pushing harder now. Oh, he's got it. He found his rhythm. He found his rhythm. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Dude, nice work, man. Good work. Way to push, Mark. If you like this video, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel for free, and consider becoming a member today. If you want your own private lessons in person or online, head over to our Rocket Swimming website. If you want shorter videos and tips throughout the week, follow us on our other social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. If you want your own Rocket Swimming merch, you can find that on the Rocket Swimming website as well, or you can find it on these YouTube videos. That said, thanks for watching this video. Get ready to rock it to the moon.